So Rode just put out one of the largest updates for the Rodecaster, both the Rodecaster 2 and the Rodecaster Duo in December after being in beta for quite a long time. And it's bringing a much, much requested feature, one that they've promised for a long time, and that is more virtual inputs for the device when you plug it into your computer. Now, as I mentioned, Rode has been beta testing this firmware update for quite a while. Um, the firmware version that you wanna be on is 1.4.4. That is both for the Rodecaster 2 and the Rodecaster Duo. And if you don't have the firmware update already, I've already updated mine, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to Road Central. You wanna download the latest update for Road Central. Then you wanna get your Roadcaster plugged into your computer. Once you do that, it should ask you if you wanna update your Roadcaster. You'll just go ahead and do that. You can also do this directly on the device if you have it plugged into the ethernet or if you have the Wi-Fi connection done. I just prefer doing it through the computer. It's a little bit easier, but if you wanna do it on your Roadcaster, you can just go to your settings. You go to system. Then you go to information and you go for check for update. And one other thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that we get the drivers for our computer or else the audio devices will not appear once we make those changes on the road. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab the Windows ones. We're gonna go ahead and install that and then we have to restart our PC. So I'll get that done. Now I'm gonna show you how to enable this setting both on the Roadcaster directly and on Road Central. One of my really favorite things about the Roadcaster is that the software on the actual physical device and Road Central are almost a one-to-one. -one. So almost anything that you wanna do on the actual device itself, you could do it on the computer and vice versa. It makes things really easy. But this is a really simple process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to settings, we're gonna to go to outputs, then we're gonna to go to multi-track, and then we're gonna to go to USB one input, and we're gonna change it from standard to expanded, it's gonna say that the USB audio will be interrupted to apply this change, but we're gonna go ahead and apply those settings. And if you wanna do this directly within the software, you're just gonna to go to device configuration. You're gonna make sure you're on output, multi-track, USB one, and you make sure that you set it to expanded. So now if we go ahead and we hop into an input and then we go to the settings, we can see that we have a game, a music, an A and a B added to our inputs. I'm gonna show the rest of this on the actual software on the computer because it's a little bit easier to see and I don't have to worry about the camera being able to focus on it. So we're gonna go into the audio setup and here we have those extra channels. So currently I have a lot of stuff going through the USB one and USB uh, chat for the USB one. So on my chat, I have my music and my discord. And then on the one, I currently have my game audio, if there is any kind of game audio going on the stream computer, which there usually isn't. But then it also has my alerts. It has any of my desktop audio, anything like that. And for the music, I also have one of my browsers attached to the music channel because whenever I play music, I'll play it through the browser. It allows me to do stuff like that really easily. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be able to leverage the music and we're gonna use the game as well to kind of uh, do all of our alerts. So all of my alert stuff is gonna be on game. All of my music is gonna be on music. My Discord is gonna be on chat. And then my regular desktop audio is gonna be on USB one. So I really like that idea. I'm gonna go ahead and throw game up here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw music up here. And so we've got those going and now they're also on the physical device. All right, so let's go ahead and add some unique colors to these so that they kind of stand out. So the game one will make it, we'll keep it a yellow, but we'll do like a more yellow yellow, why not? And then for the music, let's go ahead and make that a deep blue. All right, so we got those going and now I have to go ahead and set up my routing for these. So the routing is gonna be really important. It's gonna be entirely dependent on how you're recording your stuff. If you have the Rodecaster plugged into your gaming PC as the USB one, and then your streaming PC is USB two, your setup's gonna be entirely different. But for me, if I go ahead and go to my routing, for my headphones, I wanna be able to hear everything. So I have everything turned on. Um, I have the everything kind of set right to its, its minimal values. This is showing the fader position. So if I move the faders, it's going to move these up and down. So try to get all these faders kind of close to where I want them to be. Um, and so that's showing me that I'm going to get all of the audio through my headphones, which is great. If I ever want to mute one of them in my, my headphones, I can either go into here or I can just mute it on the fader and it will go ahead and take that out of my headphones. 
Now, the important stuff is what's gonna go to my computers. So for the streaming PC, because I get everything directly through the inputs on the streaming PC, I don't wanna send any additional audio through this channel back to that PC because it's gonna cause a lot of audio feedback. So I'm actually gonna turn off this one and the music so that the uh, alerts aren't gonna get replayed through the system and the music isn't gonna get replayed through the system and cause an echo. Now for the USB one chat, I wanna have the sound pads on. This makes sure that if I do play a sound pad while I'm playing games with friends or whatever, that audio is gonna go through to the computer and then out to the stream that way. So that's really important. And then I have my microphone on chat. This one is really important for me because it makes sure that I can control my microphone entirely separate from the rest of my audio that comes in through this USB one that's pulling all of my game audio and then the auxiliary audio as well. And then on USB two, this one is super simple. I just have my microphone going to my gaming PC and then the sound pads as well. If I wanted to play my music for whatever reason through my microphone in a game, I can just go ahead and enable this and it will go ahead and pass through the music as my microphone. Um, I don't need to do that and I don't wanna do that, so I have that here. So now the important part is changing my audio settings in OBS. All right, so now we can see that my mixer is the main multi-track coming out of the mixer as it was before. The mic is the chat still. And now what we wanna do is we wanna change these ones to the new devices that were created when we switched over and installed that driver. So for desktop audio, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this one to system. For music, we're gonna go ahead and change that to music. And then for Discord audio, we're gonna go ahead and set that one to chat. So now my chat audio, Discord audio is gonna all come through here. Music's all gonna come through here. Desktop audio is all gonna come through system. So I do have to change a few other settings. So in Discord, now I'm gonna go ahead and change my output device here. And we're gonna change this to be the chat. Uh, unfortunately, it's kinda cut off. What number was that on here? Three. So we got three here, so that's good. And now I'm gonna have to change my mixer settings because I'm sending particular audio to particular devices. So now that I have my browser open, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this. And like I said before, we want this to be music and then we want the input device. If I would ever use my microphone, it'll be my microphone. So there we go, we have our chat. So now we are all good. Uh, the final one is if you did change the uh, monitoring on here, you're gonna wanna change this one to be whatever setting you want this to be. I'm gonna put it as the main so that I can hear audio back. Um, but then we're all good to go. Uh, and my mixer audio, should all be ready for streaming. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a few audio tests here. And we're gonna make sure that everything is working the way that I want it to be working. So here we're in my streaming OBS setup. So we're gonna be able to see all of my audio sources working if I want them to be working. And then I also have the camera from the mixer here so we can see everything working on the mixer as well. So I go ahead and I start playing some music with Pretzel, um, which is also going to the music, um, the music channel. We're gonna go ahead and just press play there. And now I can see the music coming up through here and I can see the music coming in through my music sources on OBS, so that's really good to see. Uh, that's working properly, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, so now I just wanna have Discord open and we're gonna use the soundboard to help test the Discord audio. So if I just go into the soundboard and then I go ahead and launch that, we can see our Discord audio here and our Discord audio here. So that's also good to see. Um, and honestly, that's what I'm mostly concerned about. I can try to test some of my overlays, but I'll just do that on my own time. Um, the Discord and the music are the two biggest ones for me. Got them working, everything's showing up in my OBS properly for my streams. So I'm pretty confident and I'm pretty happy to go. So as I've mentioned, one of the really nice benefits about this is that I do not have to leverage voice meter anymore. I love voice meter and it's really handy and I may end up using it in the future to split some other audio. Um, but as of right now, I can do everything through my Rodecaster, which is extremely handy. I get a lot more physical control with that. Um, I like the UI, it's a little bit easier to manage and having everything in one system instead of spread across a couple 
is a lot nicer for me as well. Now, with all that said, I don't think the Rodecaster Pro 2 is at the level that I'd like it to be. I would really love for multiple channels to be available on USB 2 instead of just USB 1. This would allow a lot of people who use the Rodecaster mainly on their gaming PC to also split audio to their streaming PC. And then for people like me, it would allow me to have a little bit more control on my gaming PC because my gaming PC only has the Rode secondary, which is just an input output. There's no multiple channels there. So it'd be really nice to have multiple channels available on USB 2, and that's a really big one for me. And the second one would be VST support so that I can go ahead and customize some of the audio stuff on here a little bit more. You know, they have uh, voice effects that you can change, but it's only the default ones. You can only do minimal changes to them. You can't kind of customize, you can't bring in your own. It'd be really nice if they had it as a feature. So VSTs and more virtual inputs and outputs on USB 2 would be great. And I think that would make this the perfect device for me. Now, I'm also curious, are you currently using a Rodecaster Pro 2? And if so, how are you using it? Are you using it for streaming? Are you using it for podcasting? Are you using it for video creation? Are you using it for all of that? Are you using the virtual channels? If so, how are you using those virtual channels? I really love learning about other people's layouts. Uh, I've been talking to a few people about how they're using the Rodecaster. I also talked to someone who wanted to know if getting the Rodecaster was worth it. They then bought it, have been setting it up, and they're really happy with it so far. So I'm just really curious about what you guys think, if you're using it, if you're looking to use it. It is an expensive device, but I think it is extremely worth it for me at least. I was able to get a really good deal on it. It does a lot of stuff and I'm really hoping that it's able to continue to do more in the future. But again, don't buy anything with future promises. Um, buy it for what it is now. I still think this is a really great device now and I am super happy with it overall. And to wrap things up, I really do hope this video helped you out. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. And I'll be happy to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and big thanks to you for watching today this video. If you do wanna see any of the other videos where I've talked about my audio setups, especially ones with the Roadcaster, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.